Hello again guys, it's Carly from The Poetry of Nice and I have my weekly sales update video for you all again. Um, so full disclosure, there's no Etsy sales again this week. I think this is the third week in a row now with no Etsy sales, so I'm kind of beginning to lose hope a little bit there. Um, but I do have plenty of Poshmark and eBay sales to show you. I had a pretty good week this week with one sort of major sale that kind of tipped me over the edge um, in terms of uh, making more than I usually do. So I'll do the same as I do every week. If you're new here, I show you each and every item that's sold on both Poshmark and eBay. I'll let you know where I picked up that item, how much I paid originally for it, and um, how much the buyer paid for it. And then right at the end of the video, I will let you know all of my numbers in terms of gross sales for the week, how much I paid for all of the items in total, roughly how much I paid in fees to those platforms, and of course, my net profit that I walked away with for the week. So let's crack on. Um, starting with Poshmark, let's have these Ralph Lauren dark wash distressed um, Bermuda shorts. They sold for $15 and I had 50 cents in them from a rummage sale. Uh, same with this, another rummage sale item. This was 45 cents I had in it. Lauren Ralph Lauren, I don't pick up a lot of this, um, but I thought the skirt was pretty cute, very brightly colored. Um, and this sold in probably about five or six weeks of being listed. Um, and this sold for just $10, but that's okay. It's uh, not something I would expect to make a lot of money on. And like I said, I had 45 cents in it. So um, these Michael Kors leather wedges, these actually... Um, sort of hung out for a while, though they did have a few of like the glue marks that tend to happen with espadrilles after a while. And as you can see here, there were toe marks present as well. Paid a dollar for these at a yard sale and they sold for 25 on a best offer. I'll say it like I usually do as well. Bear in mind that some of these items sell with me sending out an offer to the buyer. And when that happens, um, basically I give them as a shipping credit of a dollar and 80 cents that I pay out of pocket. So please bear in mind, occasionally some of these items will have shipping credits from me as well. Um, Calvin Klein, I grabbed this because it was a 3X, so it was a nice plus size, um, and it was cute as well. It was like a coral orange with this keyhole detail and like little metal um, sort of detail there as well. I paid $2.40 for this, um, which was my average cost of goods for that haul for that particular day, um, and it sold for $18 on a best offer. This item was from the same haul, so again, $2.40. It was LuLaRoe. Um, I'm pretty picky when it comes to LuLaRoe, though I will say that this was listed for about two weeks, um, and it sold for $25, as you see here. It was a Carly dress, um, and I picked it up specifically. It was a size large, so that wasn't really what um, tempted me, but the print. The print was like a Southwestern type print, um, and I couldn't find any that were matching specifically, like with this print on... Uh, on either platform, Poshmark or eBay. So I went ahead and listed it, I think for 35, someone offered me 25 and I went ahead and took it. And these were also from the same haul that one Saturday. So again, $2.40 for these shoes as well. They were nine West. I picked them up based on style and the fact they were in very good condition. They were called the Lightning Black Leather Slip-On Loafers. They had a um, style number sort of down here where you can see the text um, that I was able to find out the exact name. And they sold for 35, uh, which I think was my full asking price, as you see here. All right. Um, this piece I picked up in a thrift store. So I had about $2.90 into this, like when I averaged it all out. Um, it's by Victoria Beckham. It was Victoria Beckham for Target, um, which let me go ahead and show you what that label looks like. As you can see there for Target, it was a size extra large and it had this sort of lily um, on the front there with like a little sort of ruffled peplum type thing happening and it was a shift sort of loose fit style dress and um, when I looked at the comps it was kind of all over the place some selling for as low as 10 some selling for as high as 30 I listed it at 35 hoping I would get 25 to 30 and I ended up getting 30 for this dress so I was happy with that um, okay, the next items were in a bundle. So the total of the bundle um, came to $30 for these two items together. So these American Eagle distressed shorts, I had $1 in these from a yard sale. And then this J. Crew. Uh, piece is everything, but written in French, obviously, sort of, I think it was a linen, no, it was cotton, but it felt so much like a linen um, t-shirt, really cute graphic t-shirt, and I had $2.16 into that, so $3.16 total for the items, and like I said, they sold for 30 uh, Talbot, I picked this up based completely on style and the fact that it was uh, a silk blend. Um, I had used the keywords Asian inspired just because of this sort of this neckline right here, that's all I could think of, this keyhole neckline. And I do have Valentine's in the title because originally that's when I listed it back in February and uh, January, February. And I had used that as a keyword, hoping to tempt someone for like a Valentine's outfit. It didn't work and I forgot to remove it, but nevertheless, it sold. Um, $2 and no, 50 cents, I'm sorry, is what I had into this from rummage sale and it sold for 20 
So Eileen Fisher's skirt had $2.16 into it. It was 100% linen, uh, just like a little kind of straight fit skirt. Um, and it sold for 20 on a best offer. AG jeans or Adriano Goldschmied. These were the angel bootcut jeans. Um, this is what I sort of saw in the thrift store, if that helps anybody. This logo, I think this is um, this is an older pair. Um, and obviously they are boot cut style jean. They do have some wear. There's the uh, label there. Some wear to the bottom hems and stuff, but that doesn't really stop me too much when they're a good brand of jean. Um, and I had, let me think here, $3 into these because they were half price at a thrift store. And they sold for 25 And they probably took about three months to sell, if I'm being honest um <laughs> uh cabby this next piece this was kind of interesting for me so i had 41 cents into this because it was from a fill a, a fill a bag at a church rummage sale and when i first grabbed it um it was really cute it had this like floral flip cuff and lining detail it was sort of like a pinstripe almost boyfriend blazer um, and when i looked at the comps because cabby has a style number and um, down here you'll find the tag with the fabric content and a style number is there as well um, and you can look it up and you can get uh, the name of the piece usually and also some very reliable comps from doing that um, the comps weren't very good at all um, but i decided since it was filler bag i was just going to go ahead and grab it it was lightweight it was good for the season the brand was okay um, so that's what i did and actually sold in under 48 hours for $25 which I think again was my full asking price so I'm glad that I picked it up and it just goes to show sometimes you can just kind of trust your instinct a little bit um okay this I picked this up for 50 cents at a rummage sale simply because it said Rocky Mountain National Park on it it's just a fleece jacket uh, there's not much else to say really than that. It sold in a best offer for $18 and I already got the feedback. The buyer was very, very happy with it. Um, and the last uh, Poshmark sale that I have is this. So this one was interesting. This sat for ages, first of all. Way back when Target had their collaboration, oh, sorry, Target had a junk food and Disney collaboration together. Um, they sort of finished at the end of summer and everything went on clearance. And I scooped up a whole bunch of it. Um, I liked the line and I figured other people would too. And I was sort of wrong. Um, I've sold almost all of it now. I think I just have some pins left, but um, it did not go the way that I hoped. I'm not super good at retail arbitrage. I'll be very honest with you. Um, and I invested too much. So I had $12 into this tote bag because it was 50%. Um, obviously, you can't get them anymore. So I had marked it up a little bit because of that. And it sold for $35. Buyer was happy with it. Um, and I did make, you know, a fairly decent profit on it, but it did sit for almost, I would say almost a year. It was going on, you know, sort of 10 months at that point, I think. Um, so I don't think I would do the same thing again, necessarily. I would definitely use a bit more discretion. All right, on to eBay. Um, so this Old Navy swimsuit was a size extra large. It was a dollar at a yard sale, sold for $16.99 plus the shipping. Uh, this vintage swimsuit. I love to sell vintage bathing suits, especially this time of year. This piece I picked up because of the like neon wave graphics, just such a cool graphic all over, cool print. Um, it had a belted waist and it was shorts. It was like um, long swim shorts. It had that kind of modest style to it. Um, the, I think the brand was Blair. I don't care about the brand. It's all about the style when it comes to this. And it sold for best offer of $23.99 and I had 41 cents in this from a filler bag. Lily Pulitzer, this piece has sat for ages for me. It's probably been this about seven months now. Um, and the comps on this particular piece, Lily again has a style number that you can look up. And the comps weren't super strong, maybe sort of like 30 to 35 was averaging. Like I said, seven months has been listed. Someone came along and offered me $25 plus the shipping. I had $1 into it, and so I went ahead and took that, and I'm glad it's moving along. <laughs> okay, so here was my awesome sale for this week, sale I'm very, very pleased with. Um, I picked up these boots just a few weeks ago at a yard sale that was um, actually in my neighborhood. Um, I got so much stuff there, including like the Nine West shoes that I showed you earlier on, all kinds of other stuff that has been selling consistently for me um, every single week ever since then. I had $2.40 into each piece. These did have a small flaw on them, which is obviously disclosed in photos description and condition description as well, right there, just a tiny little tear underneath sort of the buckle area. But otherwise, these boots were amazing. They were by uh, Donald J. Pliner, um, the Mac tall studded boot uh there you can see some of the logos and stuff and as you can see they sold for my full asking price of 199 dollars 99 plus shipping um i was 
so excited to get this sale. And of course, I'll be holding my breath and crossing my fingers until the buyer receives them and is sure that they like them, that they fit, all that kind of stuff. They may come back. You never know. Things boomerang all the time. Um, but as of right now, I'm very pleased with this sale. And I'm very hopeful that it uh, it sticks. We shall see. <laughs> Um, these I picked up a weekend or so ago. I had a dollar and eighty three cents into them. Catherine size one X. Um, yeah, they're just little cropped cargo pants. And uh, oh, I should mention they sold for ten dollars and fifty five cents. And I think that was because they had a flaw on them, um, like they had a button missing or something like that. Um, these shorts, I'm just glad to see them go. Fifty cents is what I had into them. Someone offered me eight dollars, and I took it because I've had them listed for like a year and a half now. They are vintage, like USA Olympic swim shorts. I used to do really well with vintage men's swim shorts, and just not so much right now. On a personal note, um, but uh, yeah. I'm glad to move these along. Um, this piece, I had 50 cents into this, I think, from a filler bag again. Um, and this was Bryn Walker. This was listed for less than a week before I got a best offer of $34, which I went ahead and took, obviously, plus the shipping as well. Um, let me show you that label as well. Bryn Walker is a fantastic brand when it comes to, like, their linen pieces and things like that. Um, and lag and look is a keyword that you are going to want to put in your title. That kind of refers to the style. You can Google it to see exactly what I mean, but that kind of boxy style with a lot of like linen and breathable fabrics, a lot of asymmetrical hems, that kind of thing is what I uh, usually think of as lag and look. Uh, Chico's, oh, maybe this was the one, okay, maybe this was the one that had the uh, button missing. Gosh, they all these uh, beige cargo pants look the same after a while. <laughs> $15 is what these sold for, um, and I had 45 cents for them, just Chico's like tabbed uh pants or whatever i'm happy enough with that um talbots um i grabbed this simply because it was 100 linen and again that kind of lag and look boxy fit um it was a women's large but it was a petite and someone offered me 18 dollars. i had 45 cents into it and i went ahead and took that um meryl morel however you want to say it uh they're just a pair of slip on sandals i've had these for quite a while now um, and someone offered me, oh no, they sold for the sale price that you see there of $19.54. So I'm happy that they went on because they have been sat for a little while. I find that their walking shoes and walking boots do a little bit better. Um, this UMG piece I actually bought for myself. I paid $1.83 was how it averaged out at the yard sale. I wore it once. I didn't really like how it looked on me. Um, so I listed it and within half an hour, I got an offer for $18 plus the shipping and I very happily took it. American Eagle men's, I am not going to be picking this up for a while for sure. $10 is what they sold for and they took almost two years to sell. Um, and I paid a dollar originally. So I'm taking a break from the men's American Eagle jeans for now. This sold within a day or so of listing. Um, obviously, it's vintage, Peanuts, Lucy and Snoopy top. Now, it did have some marks to it, which are all disclosed in the photos and in the description and condition description as well. Um, I, so I took best offer of $12. I listed for 20, which is pretty darn high, considering I had the flaws. Um, and so $12 plus shipping, I was very happy with that in one day. Um, this item has been listed for about two months at this point, um, and I paid 41 cents for it at a rummage sale. I got it because I liked the print. It was Talbot's, um, but then when I got home, I realized it was new with tags, which is always fun. Um, and so I took the best offer of $35 for this piece. Uh, this piece I paid $2.40 for, and it actually took the best offer of 15 When I got home, I realized there was a flaw on this as well. There were some dark marks on one of the sleeves um, that I couldn't get out. I think it was pen or something. I'm not too sure. Um, so I ended up taking the offer of 15 which I was still happy with. There's still a profit, and I sold an item despite it being flawed. Um, this piece sold really quickly, so it was Lauren Ralph Lauren, which I originally said that I wasn't going to pick up because it doesn't sell well, and there's quite a few that I'm selling recently that is that brand, so there we go. If you're wondering what I mean by that, it is the green tag that looks like this. So it was a size large, 100% linen plaid. Um, I picked it up based on the style. I just thought it was really cool, and it sold within a week for $28 on a best offer, and I had 45 cents into this. This Koi Scrub Top, I took an offer of 14 because it's been sat for a while and the print wasn't super nice. Um, and then this Koi as well. I hope that the jackets would do fairly well. And it didn't really do very well, honestly. The comps were pretty down low. So someone offered me 14 plus shipping and I took that because it was fair. And I had a dollar into this just like I did the other Koi Top as well. 
Eileen Fisher, this was such a beautiful piece. I cannot tell you how nice this colour was in person. Um, I paid $2.40 for this at a rummage sale, and it sold for a best offer of $20, which seems to be about average for my Eileen Fisher pieces right now, I have to say. And um, this was a new to me brand. I picked these up at a thrift store for $3.50. It's uh, Abio, Abio. Uh, let me see if I can find... There we go. It's upside down, but you get the idea. <laughs> and they were this, uh, they had a style number in them. So they were the pewter, the whatever this is, CG, pewter leather Mary Jane style flats. Um, I think they're like a comfort shoe, but they sold for the $34.99 that you see there plus shipping. They probably were listed for about three months. Um, J. Jill, wherever collection, there are lots of different sort of uh, offshoots, if you like, of J. Jill. There's J. Jill just plain, there's the wherever collection, there's Pure Jill, there's J. Jill Love Linen. I tend to pick up Pure Jill and Love Linen and tend to avoid the others unless it's really, really cheap or has a nice print. I grabbed this for 41 cents and it sold for $15 on a best offer. And I grabbed it mostly because of the print and it being springtime. Uh, this is another pair of boots from the same place that those $200 studded boots came from and the Nine West ones. Um, so $2.40 into these two. They were Bed Stew, which uh, was a new to me brand. But when I looked at the, they had just a little bit of wear, as you can see there. When I looked at the soles, as you can see here, you just, you can tell that this is quality for sure. Um, so the comps were strong on these um, and I list them high really quite far above where the comps were, just to kind of test it out a little bit, thinking that they were out of season. Um, anyway, someone came along within, you know, a few weeks now and offered me 65, which I went back, I revisited my comps when they sent me the offer. I saw that that was very reasonable and very much in line with, oh, really to the top end of what they were selling for right now in this season. So $65 I was happy with after $2.40 investment. Uh, soft surroundings. I paid three dollars and fifty cents at a thrift store. I really liked this piece. Um, it's just sat for a long time, and again, it's out of season right now. I picked it up back in I think the fall, like fall winter, um, and someone offered me twenty three dollars, so I took that. These have been listed for quite a while as well. Um, I would say getting on towards a year. Um, they were very hard to photograph. They actually were like gladiator sandals that kind of like wound all the way up the leg. Um, and I wasn't familiar with the brand, but they were made in Spain. I just, I don't know. I think they're quite expensive as well, retail, fairly. Um, but there was just not a lot of action on them on Poshmark on here. I don't think it's a brand necessarily that anybody's really looking for. It had this little ladybug as the symbol um, and then you can kind of make out the brand there, Yokono. Um, anyway, someone offered me 15 and I had $2 into them, so I was happy to take that and move them along after all that time. And the final item I'm going to show you this week is uh, that, oh, these new tag People's Liberation Tanya Bootcut Jeans. Um, I picked these up for $3 at a yard sale just a couple of weeks ago. I had them listed fairly high, but they did have a small flaw on the back of one leg. You can kind of see there it was just like a white mark. Um, so I had to disclose that. Someone offered me $24.99. And considering they had the flaw, I was happy to take that. All right, let's do numbers. So my gross sales this week, so that's from the 13th to the 19th of May, was $1,046.04. If you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, you'll know that's a lot more than I usually make. <laughs> so don't think that it's like this every single time. Um, but my cost of goods for every single thing that I showed you here today was a total of $69.35. My fees, um, I say this every week as well, but I round all my fees up to 20% of what my gross sales are. Poshmark takes 20%. eBay takes a little bit less between eBay and PayPal, close to like 15%. However, for the sake of full disclosure and making sure I'm giving everybody a realistic look into what it is um, to have to pay to sell on these platforms, I just rounded up to 20% to keep it consistent. Um, so 20% of my gross sales was $209.21, so it would have gone out to fees to both Poshmark and eBay and PayPal. Um, and so that puts my net profit, what I walked away with this week, as $767.48, which I am very happy with. Um, all right, you guys, thank you so much for hanging out. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you are having a wonderful time sourcing in the sunshine. I'm having a great time personally at yard sales right now. Um, just enjoying it, being out and, you know, early in the morning and all that kind of stuff. When it's a little quieter, I really enjoy that. Um, please, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Please do subscribe if you haven't yet. I would love to have you. Don't forget to say hello in the comments so I can say hi back and I will catch you in the next one. Bye, you guys.